హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు మై యూట్యూబ్ ఛానల్ జర్నీ విత్ విజయ్ కుమార్ శ్రీవాస్తవ్ టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు స్టడీ ద టాపిక్ రెన్ఫెడ్ అగ్రికల్చర్ బిఫోర్ ప్రజెంటేషన్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ మై సెల్ఫ్ ఐ ఎమ్ విజయ్ కుమార్ శ్రీవాస్తవ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ డన్ ఎంఎస్ అగ్రికల్చర్ విత్ స్పెషలైజ్డ్ ఎరోనామీ అండ్ ప్రజెంట్లీ ఇన్ ప్రైవేట్ జాబ్ అసోసియేటెడ్ విత్ సీడ్ ఇండస్ట్రీ సిన్స్ ట్వంటీ ఫైవ్ ఇయర్స్ ఇన్ ఎక్స్ట్రా అవర్స్ ఐ ఎమ్ ట్రైంగ్ టు ప్రిపేర్ అండ్ అప్లోడ్ వీడియోస్ రిలేటెడ్ టు అగ్రికల్చర్ టు సపోర్ట్ స్టూడెంట్స్ అండ్ కన్సర్న్ వన్స్ to whom it may be useful hope my video is matching the contents for various agriculture and other competitive examinations so now to move on what is rain fed agriculture rain fed agriculture refers to the area under various types of crops where the cultivation is dependent upon the monsoon rainfall means in case of rain fed agriculture the crop water requirement is purely met with rainfall is the term rain fed it is mixed of two words rain plus fed means the area where the water requirement is purely met with rain rain fed farming is crop production in regions where the annual rainfall is ranging more than 1150 mm means here the crops are not subjected to moisture stress because there is desired rainfall but there is no irrigation sources and the crop is depending upon the rainfall to meet its water requirement to grow the crops in rain fed agriculture the emphasis should be given on disposal of excess water because during rainy season there is more water what is needed so we have to think about water shed management and storage of water to get the maximum crop yield utilizing the high level of inputs and control of water erosion because of excess rainfall or the water which is causing the erosion due to flow rain fed agriculture is practiced under a wide variety of soil types different agroclimatic regions and having the different rainfall patterns here to study the overview of rain fed agriculture status in india india is ranking number 1 as rain fed agriculture cultivation is concerned and india has the position both in terms of area of cultivation and production under rainfed agriculture in india there is approximate 142 million hectare net cultivated area and out of this the net sown area of 86 million hectare is falling under rainfed agriculture which is comprising of around 60% of total cultivated area the total gross cultivated area under rain fed agriculture is around 106 million hectares and it is a part of around 55% of gross cultivated area as per paroda 1997 even after utilizing the full irrigation potential in our country nearly 50% of the cultivated area will be remain under rain fed agriculture so rain fed agriculture is playing very very important role in our country as agriculture production is concerned around 60% of india's population and also 60% of live stock is depending upon the agriculture other side the farmers dependency is also very high on live stock which is the alternate source of income apart from arable cropping because of this situation the rain fed agriculture is very very important and it will also remain continue to play a very very important and crucial role in indian economy and for food security for a long period here to study the rain fed agriculture contribution to the indian agriculture rain fed areas contributed significantly to the country's food production they account for 89% of 
millet production in our country 88% of pulses 73% of cotton production 69% of oil seed production and 40% rice production in our country here if you will see the data millet pulses oil seeds and cotton are playing major role to the production in rain fed areas while rice and wheat is contributing maximum in irrigated area and less area under rain fed agriculture because these are two main edible crops staple crops of our country besides rain fed areas support 64% of cattle 74% of sheep and 78% of goat population in the country about 61% of india's farmers rely on rain fed agriculture and 55% of the gross crop area is under rain fed farming here if you will see the total gross irrigated area is around 87.7 million hectares and gross cultivated rain fed area is around 106 million hectares so the rain fed agriculture is having the very very important role in indian agriculture if we will compare the irrigated land cultivation and rain fed land cultivation one hectare irrigated land yield is equivalent to three hectares rain fed land yield related to cereals food production so it is obvious that in rain fed areas the yield is significantly lower compared to irrigated belts so we have to think about how to develop the prosperity and increasing the production in rain fed areas and its development now to study the magnitude of problems of rain fed agriculture as we have earlier studied india is ranking number one in rain fed agriculture both in terms of area and value of production over the years as per the data indicates farmers in rain fed areas have been facing several adversity problems which are related to climate variability crop failures they are not getting remunerative prices and rain fed areas is not having the focus of policy and public investments as climate variability is concerned there are short term variations in climatic conditions which may be for daily seasonal annual interannual or several years so rain fed agriculture is having the maximum dependence on climate variability weather pattern as climate change is concerned it refers to the long term trends in climate averages for the periods of decades or even longer period rain fed agriculture is always having the problem of crop failures the farmers are getting loss they are not getting the good prices for their produce so there is need for attention of developing the strategies for the upliftment of farmers of rain fed agriculture rain fed agriculture relies on rainfall for water is irrigation to the crop rain fed farming provide the much of the food production for food consumption by poor communities in developing countries due to climatic factors soil factors and socio factors the rain fed farmers are economically weak with little ability to withstand risk or take risks as per historical data and evidences it has been observed that there is a strong correlation between rain fed farming and poverty hunger and water stress in developing countries rain fed farmers fails to get higher yield and they are unable to supply required resources and they are having problems with fetching good prices as per the government policy as rain fed farmer 
is much more having dependency on weather variability, climate change, which makes rain-fed farmers more vulnerable to climate changes. This means the farmers are more sufferer due to weather and climatic factors, which is resulting negative impacts as crop production activity is concerned. As per National Rain-Fed Area Authority, there are 499 rain-fed districts in our country. In the rain-fed area covers the districts mostly in the states of Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. As per CRIDA and IESRI, CRIDA refers to the Central Research Institute for Dryland Agriculture and IASRI, Indian Agriculture Statistics Research Institute. Using the census data of 2001, they have notified 499 districts each rain-fed districts. On account of various factors, including there may be increasing number of rain-fed districts and it may cross 718. If we will go through physiographically the rain-fed regions, these are encompasses the desert terrain of Rajasthan in the northwest, the plateau region of central India, the alluvial plains zone of the Ganga Jamuna river basin, the central highlands of Gujarat, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, the rain shadow regions of Dakkan in Maharashtra, the Dakkan Plateau in Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu Highlands. These are the geographic area on the basis of seeing it all in 2000. So these are the major districts and geographical area which is consisting of rain-fed districts and rain-fed agriculture. Now turn to study the difference between rain-fed and irrigated farming. Here the difference will be studied based on different criteria like season, nature of crops, crop duration, cropping system adopted, number of crops, tillage operations, land preparation and risk associated with farming. As a season is concerned, in case of rain-fed farming, in a certain part of the year the crop is grown where rainfall received. So, the rain-fed farming is limited to the area where there is assurance of rainfall. Each irrigated farming is concerned throughout the year the crop cultivation can be done depending upon the water availability and irrigation sources. As the nature of crops is concerned, in rain-fed farming the crops and varieties are selected which are having drought tolerance nature or having less water requirement. Each irrigated farming is concerned, the crops are selected according to the need and accordingly the varieties are selected. Each crop duration is concerned, in rain-fed farming, the duration of crops depends on the rainfall duration, growing period and most of the crops are selected having less duration which can complete its life cycle in shortest duration because of limitation of irrigation sources and water supply. In irrigated farming, the crop duration is depending upon the need because there is no constraint of irrigation sources and water availability, so the farmers are having the, their own preference. As cropping system is concerned, Rain-fed farming is always preferable having mixed cropping. Mixed cropping is beneficial because in some cases if one crop fails, the another crop will have the, will have the assured income. In case of irrigated farming, generally pure cropping is done. Now the criteria of number of crops. Due to limitation of moisture, irrigation sources, rainfall, 
one or two crops in a year is possible in rain-fed farming while in case of irrigated farming more than two crops in a year can be grown subjected to availability of water and irrigation sources as tillage is concerned in rain-fed farming the field is plowed too deep to increase infiltration of rains while in irrigated farming there is no need for deep plowing to conserve soil moisture now land preparation in rain fed farming the land is prepared immediately after rainfall and sowing operations are done based on residual moisture while in case of irrigated farming the land is prepared according to optimum time of sowing now the risk criteria in rain fed farming risk of crop failure is expected due to insufficient moisture or drought or the break of rainfall season in between while in irrigated farming there is no risk of crop failure related to water availability of or water shortage at all on the basis of rainfall the dry land agriculture is categorized in three types of farming first one is dry farming second is dry land farming and third is rain fed farming dry farming is characterized by having less than 750 mm of annual rainfall dry land farming is having annual rainfall 750 mm to 1150 mm and rain fed farming is categorized by having rainfall more than 1150 mm per year now we will go through differentiation between dry farming dry land farming and rain fed farming which are classified on the basis of annual rainfall as dry farming is concerned the cultivation of crops are done in regions where the annual rainfall is ranging less than 750 mm and dry farming falls under arid regions where the crops are selected with growing season crop duration less than 75 days crop failure is most common in these areas because of prolonged dry spells during crop period and failure of monsoons in case of dry land farming the cultivation of crops are taking place in regions where the annual rainfall is ranging in between 750 to 1150 mm and dry land farming areas are falling under semi arid tracts and the growing crops are selected having the duration in between 75 to 120 days in these areas in spite of prolonged dry spells crop failure is relatively less frequent compared to dry farming now rain fed farming in this farming cultivation of crops are done in regions where annual rainfall is more than 1150 mm and rain fed farming areas are falling under humid regions and the growing season crops are selected having duration more than 120 days in the rain fed farming is characterized that the crops are not subjected to soil moisture stress during the crop period because of frequent rainfalls periodically which are meeting the requirement of crop irrigation sources unesco for asia and the pacific distincts dry land agriculture mainly in two categories first one is dry land farming and second is rain fed farming so now we will go through the distinguishing features on the basis of various parameters like rainfall moisture availability to the crop growing season growing regions cropping system and constraints on the basis of rainfall dry land farming is categorized having regions the rainfall is less than 800 mm annually while rain fed farming is falling under regions having rainfall more than 800 mm annually as moisture 
availability is concerned in dry land farming there is shortage of adequate moisture to the crop while in case of rain fed farming there is enough moisture availability and there is no shortage now growing season in case of dry land farming the crops growing season is having less than 200 days while in case of rain fed farming it is more than 200 days is growing regions concerned the dry land farming is falling under arid and semi arid areas as well as uplands of sub humid and humid regions while rain fed farming is consisting of humid and sub humid regions now cropping system in dry land farming because of moisture stress and less water availability single crop is selected with intercropping system because of intercropping there is some assurance to crop in case of failure of one crop we can get the yields from second crop while in rain fed farming intercropping or double cropping is preferred as constraints are concerned in dry land farming the areas are more prone to wind and water erosion while in case of rain fed farming because of frequent and adequate rainfalls it is prone to water erosion so these are the differences on the basis of unesco in dry land farming and rain fed farming on the basis of annual rainfall pattern dry land agriculture is the profitable production of useful crops without irrigation sources on lands which are falling under arid and semi arid and it is receiving the annual rainfall of less than 700 mm as rain fed agriculture characteristics are concerned it is the profitable production of useful crops without irrigation on the lands which are falling under humid and sub humid regions that receive annual rainfall of more than 750 mm and there is adequate moisture for crop cultivation and there is no shortage so these are the differentiation in between dry land agriculture and rain fed agriculture during differentiation between rain fed and dry land farming the point has been considered that rain fed farming generally refers to agriculture which is totally dependent on rain water and doesn't receive any additional water at any stage of the crop through irrigation so it should be specify and clarify that in case of rain fed farming the crop is totally depending upon the monsoon rainfall for its irrigation requirement and there is no water supply from other sources so in other words rain fed agriculture is also known as non irrigated agriculture and dry lands are therefore part of rain fed lands dry lands are the area where the minimum annual rainfall is estimated to be low as 750 mm for crop cultivation this range of rainfall is not sufficient for growing of crops and there is often moisture stress symptoms in such areas and the evapotranspiration exceeds moisture absorption in dry land areas the cultivation in such dry land areas is known as dry land farming dry lands are scattered throughout the country except high rainfall states now to go through main constraints of rain fed agriculture the constraints can be defined as drought and water scarcity which is a constant threat to the farmers next one is stubborn poverty and food insecurity rain fed agriculture is defined as the poor man's farming where the the farmers are economically weak and they are not having the proper resources for the cultivation of the crops there is low crop productivity in these regions and high instability because of weather varieties climate changes and non assurance of 
monsoon rainfalls other problems are deforestation and shifting cultivation practices which are deteriorating the soil health there is soil erosion and water erosion problems lessen and declining soil health because of inadequate in input supply to the fields there are problems of flooding in plains when excess rains are causing the water erosion and in some areas there will be flooding another area areas with the constraints are low rain water use efficiency where the excess rain is going as a runoff and there is no provision for its management like water shed management or water storage facility so the maximum water is losing through runoff losses there is low water quality for irrigation in such area there is lack of water resources which can be utilized as irrigation sources later on there is lack of sufficient transport and communication systems and the technology gaps in agriculture and animal husbandry because of no proper development of the region and measures which should be developed by the government for the upliftment of farmers the rainfed agriculture is affected by undependable and high level pattern there is poor socio economic systems of the farmer in these regions and acute fodder shortage and poor livestock productivity so these are the constraints which are prevailing in rainfed agriculture and working as a constant threat now to study the strategies which are needed for development of rainfed areas the government should plan action for the soil and water conservation measures like developing water sheds area water harvesting uh, dam construction for storage of excess water during monsoon season there should be control in shifting cultivation because of these the soil health is degrading in such areas there should be promotion of cultivation of mushroom sericulture and horticultural crops like pineapple mandarin orange pomegranate guava and citrus which are having the water tolerant natures there should be drainage facilities land grading and storage of excess water in flood prone areas we have to follow the measures for augmenting irrigation sources which can promote multiple croppings and there should be extensive livestock development measures now we will study about national rainfed area authority which is having the prime responsibility for the development of rainfed areas national rainfed area authority was established on 3rd november 2006 as an expert body of ministry of agriculture to provide the much needed knowledge inputs regarding systematic upgradation and management of country's dry land and rainfed agriculture the vision of national rainfed area authority is to make rainfed agriculture an economically viable enterprise for improving livelihood and welfare of farming community by adopting appropriate strategies which are compatible with agroecology agro biodiversity and sustainability and the mission of national rainfed area authority is to promote prosperity of farmers and ensure exclusive growth in rainfed areas of the country on a sustainable basis the functions of the national rainfed area authority can be defined as knowledge and technology support formulating and advocating policies and road map for the success rationalizing guidelines prioritizing rainfed areas capacity building a skill development and awareness generation identifying research gaps and promoting studies related to that agro biodiversity conservation practices 
मल्टीलेटरल एंड इंटरनेशनल कॉपरेशन कोलाबरेटिंग डाटा इन इंफॉर्मेशन मोनिटरिंग एंड इवेलुएशन सो दीज आर द डिफरेंट फंक्शंस विच शू बी कोऑर्डिनेटेड विद डिफरेंट डिपार्टमेंट्स फॉर द सक्सेस ऑफ रेनफेड एग्रीकल्चर नाउ टू स्टडी द गोल्स ऑफ नेशनल रेनफेड एरिया अथॉरिटी द फर्स्ट गोल इज टू सर्व द नेशंस एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर बाई डेवलपिंग कॉम्पिटेंस एज एन एक्सपर्ट बॉडी एंड प्रोवाइड द मच नीडेड इनपुट्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन नॉलेज टेक्नोलॉजी एंड मैनेजमेंट प्रैक्टिस टू ऑल द स्टेक होल्डर्स कंसर्न विथ अपग्रेडेशन एंड मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द कंट्रीज रेनफेड एग्रीकल्चर सिस्टम इंक्लूडिंग द ड्राईलैंड एग्रीकल्चर द सेकेंड गोल इज टू एक्ट एज एन ओवर आर्चिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फॉर फ्रंट लाइन पायलटिंग ऑफ इनोवेशंस एंड इमर्जिंग टेक्नोलॉजीज इन रेनफेड एग्रीकल्चर थर्ड गोल इज टू सर्व एज ए प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर कवर्जेंस एंड कोऑर्डिनेशन ऑफ वेरियस प्रोग्राम्स स्कीम्स प्रोजेक्ट्स अदर इनिशिएटिव विच आर रिलेटिंग टू रेनफेड एग्रीकल्चर सिस्टम विथ ए व्यू टू रियलाइजिंग सिनर्जी एट बोथ प्लानिंग एंड इंप्लीमेंटेशन स्टेजेज फोर्थ गोल इज टू प्रमोट इफिशियंसी एंड इफेक्टिवनेस इन डिलीवरी ऑफ स्कीम्स प्रोग्राम्स प्रोजेक्ट्स अदर इनिशिएटिव दैट टारगेट द रेनफेड एग्रीकल्चर रीजन्स एंड फार्मर्स by ensuring proper and timely advice guidance and supervision besides undertaking evaluation studies fifth goal is to serve as the source of information and database on all aspects of rainfed agriculture including rainfed farmers sixth goal is to develop comprehensive drought proofing plans and undertake time bound implementation through the state governments beginning with 150 most vulnerable rainfed districts identified through nicra study now to focus on research on dryland agriculture for the development of dryland agriculture and rainfed farming central soil and water conservation research and training institute was established in dehradun during 1954 simultaneously eight soil conservation centers were also set up at different locations at dehradun which is in uttarakhand chandigarh punjab agra uttar pradesh kota rajasthan bellari karnataka hyderabad in telangana valsad in gujarat and utakmand uti in tamil nadu the dry farming demonstration centers were started in 1955 Soil conservation in the catchments of river valley projects was launched in 1962. All India coordinated research project for agriculture, which is known as AICRPDA, was launched in 1970. International Crop Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics, which is known as ICRISET, was established at Hyderabad in 1972. All India coordinated research project on agrometeorology AICRPAM was established in 1983 at Hyderabad Central Research Institute for Dryland Agriculture CRIDA was established at Hyderabad in 1985 and there were launching of NWD PRA National Watershed Development Projects for Rainfed Areas the programs were initiated by government of india in 1991 in 25 states and two union territory so these are the prime institutions which are related to dry land and rainfed area development now to focus on historical background of dry farming in 1923 first systematic scientific approach to tackle dry farming problems was initiated by tamhane In 1923, Tamhane established dry farming research station at Manjri, Pune, Maharashtra. In 1933, research station was established at Bijapur in Karnataka and Solapur in Maharashtra. In 1934, research station was established at Hagri and Raichur in Karnataka. In 1935, research station established at Rohtak, Haryana. And in 1942. Bombay Land Development Act was passed which is considered as 
milestone in Indian agriculture. Now we will go through what is Bombay Land Development Act. This is an act to provide for the making and execution of schemes relating to the construction of tanks, embankments and other works, the prohibition and control of grazing for the purposes of preservation of soil, prevention of soil erosion, improvement of water supply and other matters in order thereby to protect and improve land and crops in the province of Bombay. In 1944, monograph on dry farming in India was written by N. V. Kanitkar, who is known as Narayan Vinayak Kanitkar and it was published in the Imperial Council of Agriculture Research ICR, which is now Indian Council of Agriculture Research. So this presentation was all about rain-fed agriculture. Hope this will be useful to all of you. Thank you very much. I have given here my YouTube channel details, Journey with Vijay Kumar Srivastava. Having request, please visit the channel, subscribe it and provide your kind and valuable feedback. Thank you.